Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. You know, I'm feeling pretty adventurous today, so I'm gonna try something, and you know me, I don't claim to be an expert on any of this stuff, but I'm sure not an expert on this. I'm going to change, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna change styluses, uh, cartridges from one record player to another. Uh, both of them have what looks to be like a standards-based head shell mount, um, so I'm gonna actually try to uh, disconnect one and put it on a different one and it involves a little bit of wiring and some balancing and we're going to use a protractor which i think we can get for free online so i don't know if this video has a title of fail or major fail or something like that probably didn't go that well if it has a title of how to or something of that nature then maybe i figured it out so anyway join me on this uh fun adventure today and let's see if we can uh, swap out cartridges welcome to recordology Okay, so here is the stylus that we're going to be removing and putting on another turntable. Now you'll see the wiring on the back there. From what I've seen, all we need to do is remove those two screws from the head shell and pull the wiring clamps off the back. But I'm thinking we're gonna need to know the order in which the wires are connected. So I made a little chart here, um, just illustrating that which colored wires go into what slots. Um, also, I got tools. Um, I saw somebody doing this with uh, just like a basic set of pliers and small screwdrivers. So, all right, let's give it a shot. I really don't know what I'm doing, but that ought to make this more entertaining for you. Okay, here goes nothing. Um, all right, I'm going to start by pulling these wiring clips off. They might be on there tighter than I'm anticipating. No, they're not, okay. So, I'm holding the handle of the, uh, of the uh, tone arm and pulling backwards. Okay, they came off very easily. Okay, so now I'm going to take a flat head screwdriver and remove the cartridge. I think I might have misplaced the cover, which is really bad, so we gotta make sure that I don't let the stylus uh, itself touch anything. So I'm gonna hold this just so I don't um, let it fall. Now there is a bolt underneath a nut, so we're gonna need to make sure that we don't lose these parts. And I feel like they're probably gonna go flying once I drop them down. So let's see here. It the wrong way. Okay, there goes one right onto the floor. Awesome. And I'm going to loosen the other one here. Now I'm really going to need to hold it so I don't. Uh, the whole thing is loose now. Okay, and that one goes on the floor too. But the good point, the important thing is, is the actual cartridge did not fall. So. This is the Ortofon OM5E. We are gonna put this on the C100. So, okay, there we go. So far, so good, you guys. Okay, guys, so I removed the stylus from this machine, which is where the uh, uh, Ortofon is gonna be going. It took a little bit more muscle to get these wires off. They were a little tighter. So I actually had to use uh, the blade on the um, Leatherman, not just the pliers. It kind of took both wiggling and jiggling. Uh, also, the wire configuration is different, um, so I'm going to wire it in the same way it was on the other machine, uh, but I did write down the wiring configuration of this one as well. So, um, also, the uh, let's see if you can see it. I'll use the pliers to hold it. The screws coming off of uh, this machine had little washers, little plastic washers, which I think will be good to have. So I'm kind of interchanging... Um, some parts off of each one. They all fit, they're all standard space. Also the nuts on this one were rounded. So I'm stealing the uh, the hex nuts off of the other one because I think that makes more sense. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, very carefully put the, uh, um, the bolts in to hold the uh, cartridge in place. So I'm not gonna bore you with that because that's just gonna be a bunch of pictures of my hands. So I'm gonna put those screws and uh, nuts in place and get this physically on the uh, assembly. 
So it occurred to me a minute ago, why am I doing this with the head shell attached? I'm going to take this off and that way I can uh, work on the mat or some other place. But um, the U-turn uh, didn't have the ability to take the head shell off easily. So that one you have to do while it's attached. But this one, I am pulling it off so I can do that separately. Okay, this is a lot easier. <laughs> I, can, I can see how this just will make a lot more sense. So. It's pretty flat, um, even though this uh, finger rest goes up a little bit, I can still hold it pretty flat. So what I'm gonna try and do is put these screws in from the bottom, and maybe that'll help stabilize it, because it was really hard to do while it was loose in there. So I'm gonna slide them to the front for now. Alignment's gonna be a big part of this going forward, but for now, we just need to get it on. So. Again, being very careful not to touch the stylus. Um, I'm going to, and there's two slots you can see. And I see this metal thing. I'm not sure if it's like a grounding plate or, or whatnot, but uh, there's two notches here um, that need to align with the screws. We're gonna just kind of loosely put that in there for now. Cool, I've already made more progress than I had before. And now I'm just gonna thumb screw these uh, screws on and see, uh, see if that does the trick. Again, we just need to get it physically mounted and we'll go ahead and wire it like this too, and then we'll do the alignment, um, when, obviously when it's on the tone arm. So an interesting question came up while I was doing this. Do I wire this cartridge the way it was wired on the outgoing turntable or the incoming turntable? Is it specific to the cartridge or is it specific to the turntable? And uh, doing some research, it looks like it's specific to the turntable, not to the stylus. So. I wired it up the way that the uh, previous Audio-Technica stylus was wired on this. So if you're screaming at this and you know that I'm about to blow up my turntable, enjoy. Um, okay, so I put on the leads um, where I believe they need to go. Um, they went on a lot, it went on a lot easier than it came off. Um, I've got the new screws and uh, kind of put in here loosely because we still have to align it. Um, the head shell assembly is ready to put back on. So I'm going to do that. Um, let's see. It's been a while since I've installed this, so I don't know if it clicks or, yep, it clicks. And then screw that on tight. Cool. Now, obviously we need to do the most important part, which is the alignment. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Audio-Technica stylus back on the other turntable. I'll be right back with you. Then you gotta print off a Stevenson Protractor there for free online. If you go Google it, you should be able to find a few examples. And there it is. Okay, so once you print off the Stevenson Protractor, and it's available a couple different places, vinylengine.com has them, although you have to create an account. There's another site that I found where you don't have to create an account and they have them, but um, read about it, learn about it, but uh, typically what you're able to do is just print this off on an eight, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, um, and the idea is that we're going to have the spindle here and uh, a lot, use these two what are called null points to align the cartridge. But the first thing you need to do is, and this is kind of sketchy, but you need to punch a hole um, in the middle. And this is going to be, I want to be as precise as possible, but you got to punch a hole right here. Kind of going soft until it grabs. And I, Okay, it's kind of nerve wracking. Okay, that's pretty dang good actually. So yeah, you want to have that. Obviously you can put the spindle there and then um, I'll show you how to do the next part. Okay, I trimmed this um, a little bit more just so it didn't hang over the edge. So once you've got your hole punched as accurately as possible, I found it's actually a little bit too small. So now there are people, and the Stevenson Protractor is one of multiple methods and uh, ways to do this. For me, it seems like it was a very common one, so I went with that, it makes sense to me too. Um, but there are people that take this to the nth degree and have this printed on fiber core, and they order pr professionally made ones, and you know, we're not doing surgery here, we're just trying to listen to a record. So I'm taking it with a grain of salt. So getting that aligned as well as possible, I'm now going to push down on it. I feel like we've achieved a reasonable center. And now what we are going to do 
is align the cartridge. So, um, obviously we have it here, and what you're gonna wanna do basically is you're gonna wanna align it so that it's squared up on this null point and on this one. Now, obviously when I rotate this over, you can see that this one doesn't line up, so you have to rotate this forward. And then, so you're gonna do an alignment here, rotate it forward, do an alignment there. Those are the two null, null points according to the uh, uh, Stevenson methodology. And uh, we'll give it a shot, see how it works. And right about this time, you're probably saying to yourself, wow, I'm really thankful that my turntable came with a pre-installed and pre-aligned cartridge. And I have to agree. Now you may notice the lighting is changing because I'm doing this on and off throughout the day. Uh, so I apologize for that. But definitely this isn't something I would want to do every day just for the fun of it. But significant upgrade like this, it's worth doing it. So let me adjust the shot a little bit and we'll go ahead and uh, do the actual alignment. And basically the gist of it is, is that you're gonna use those lines on those two squared areas to make sure that the, uh, the stylus is perfectly in line with that. So, all right. Okay guys, so what we're going to do now is we are actually going to position the stylus over the first null point and you're going to actually put the needle physically on that cross dot, the uh, cross section. I apologize for my shaky hands. You guys know I have shaky hands. Try not to drag it while it's down, obviously, but you're gonna do your best to get that stylus to be on that actual um, cross section there. So it's gonna take some doing there. There. That looks pretty dang precise. Now, uh, you can't see it from this angle, but looking at it head on, the stylus is definitely um, at the wrong angle, so or the uh, cartridge. So I'm gonna align it so it's squared up, and then we're gonna do the same thing to the other. And we should be able to align them to both. It should allow us to do that. So I'll go ahead and uh, make that adjustment now, and we'll see what happens. And Earlier, the stuff we were doing earlier, you know, we should have had the stylus protector on. And I can just hear the comments now. Um, but I'm looking top down. And again, trying to find that point there. It's tough because the head shell itself isn't, you can't align that. You can only align the uh, stylus and the cartridge. So, gosh, it's hard to do when you got shaky hands. <laughs> This is not great to do with your stylus. Again, kids, that's why you want a pre-aligned one. Okay, that's pretty close. And looking from the front, it's better, but not quite there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make the adjustment so you don't have to sit, me sh sit and watch me shake for five minutes, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, um, I got it as close as I could. This is... I don't want to say I wish I hadn't done this because it definitely gave me an upgraded stylus cartridge on this turntable. Um, but I will say this, it's definitely been a, um, a bit more work than I thought it would be. But I couldn't, and the one thing that makes it difficult too is this cartridge, as you can see, doesn't stick out square like the Audio-Technica one does from underneath the head shell. So it's hard to align it looking top down, which is I've seen the way a lot of people do it. So I had to do it from the front, which is a little bit more difficult and time consuming. But what I was, no and you gotta realize that with a record player, you know, if you have a linear tracking head, which literally, instead of swive swiveling on, a, on an arm, will literally slide across like this, you're not gonna get perfect tracking because it's gonna be aliasing to the left out here and aliasing to the right in there. So there's gonna be a, one point where it's aligned and then every place inside and outside of that are gonna be off. So it's only a certain level of precision that you can get. But I got it so that on this one it was a little bit cantered in and on this one a little bit cantered out. So I'm calling that a good average. And for what I'm looking for, I think that'll work. Um, I know how to adjust it if I need to. But the last step now, oh yeah, and so once you get it aligned, tighten those screws and that'll mess up your alignment again. And then you have to double, double check it and make sure you get it right. Um, it's a lot of finicky little work. The next thing you need to do is do your uh, um, uh, counterweight, re-calibrate re, uh, your uh, tone arm weight, your counterbalance there, because 
your new one is probably a different weight. Um, then we can hook it back up and uh, give it a listen. So uh, let's see how it sounds. Okay guys, we got a little bit of a problem. <laughs> so um, let me turn my speakers on here and show you. Um, but basically, I think we wired this wrong. So those of you that know, probably were laughing this entire time waiting for this, but um, yeah, check this out. Hear that? Low level hum. Well, it's a group bang. Plus it's it sounds out of phase, so yeah, we got problems. So my guess is that I was incorrect when I said you should match the wiring to the table um, and that what we really should have done was to match the wiring to the way the, the cart was wired before. So I am going to rewire uh, the cartridges, and I say cartridges because I'm also doing this on the other turntable as well. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna try that and uh, be lucky you don't have to sit through that part of it because I will be right back and by the time you see it, it'll be over with. Okay guys, um, that did it. So it's actually, I had forgotten this head shell assembly comes off. So it's actually pretty easy to do it. I didn't have to worry about realigning the cartridge or anything. And it definitely is, the wiring needs to match and stay with the cartridge, not the turntable. Um, that's probably like record player 101 for you experts out there. But yeah, give a listen to the difference. Totally clean. There's no rumble. It's great. Well, it's a group thing. It's got a bump. So yeah, that sounds a lot better. And the phase is correct and everything is the way it's supposed to be. So yeah, we got it squared away. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, you guys. Um, that was an interesting, interesting process and an interesting project. Okay guys, that was a lot more work than I thought it would be. It's now getting close to four or five o'clock. And now admittedly I didn't do it all day, but on and off all day it took. So I hope you enjoyed that. I would recommend only doing that if you have a good reason to. Don't just do it to experiment because uh, there's a lot of little details and you could ruin things if you're not careful. And I am not gonna tell you all the mistakes I made. I was dropping things and touching things I shouldn't have on the assembly and um, well, but the sound that I'm going to reap from that is is of my own doing, although I think there was no damage. But uh, it's definitely nerve-wracking. Definitely keep those stylus protectors on when you're doing it. If you have a cart that you pick up somewhere that's higher end, uh, specifically elliptical, and the OM5E from Ortofon is elliptical, so it's a finer point. It'll attract those grooves better. You get more sound out of your records. Um, so it's definitely worth the upgrade in that case. And then the... Uh, other uh, AT cartridge and stylus was definitely uh, still a good one to have. So I put that on the other turntable. Uh, but there you go, guys. How to do it, how not to do it. Uh, hopefully that's helpful, at, at least entertaining. Um, but let me know in the comments, you know, your experience is doing that or maybe what your favorite cartridge is. The OM5E isn't super high end. It's kind of a, a middle of the line, but it's definitely an upgrade. So, all right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Um, happy record hunting as always. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Recordology. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss a single thing. I am the Edison Phonograph. The more you become acquainted with me, the better you will like me. Ask the dealer.